Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another reading vlog on my channel. In today's reading vlog, I will be reading the Caravel series by Stephanie Garber. I read a couple pages of this book online two years ago and then I looked up some details and then I spoiled it for myself and I've been trying to wait until I forget the spoiler before picking it up again and it just seems like it's not happening. The more I try to forget, the more it's being retained in my mind. So I've given up and here we are again trying to read it Let me know in the comments if you guys have read this book or if you've read Once Upon a Broken Heart And let me know what your thoughts are on these books has going on. I love when authors put in a little extra something in terms of design, the layout of the book, just little details here and there. I feel like there's a name for this when you see colors in feelings, in music. I learned about it in a class. It's called emotional synesthesia. Emotional synesthesia consists of having visual experiences of color in response to different emotions. Scarlet has emotional synesthesia. Nobody can accept physical and emotional abuse from a parent but I think it hits harder for me maybe because I have studied psych but I'm just more sensitive to stuff like that for that reason I can't read dark romances like I read There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark I didn't know that was by Sophie Lark actually like I didn't know who Sophie Lark was at the time that I read that but I really didn't enjoy There Are No Saints and I really didn't enjoy Hooked by Emily McIntyre so something about those like emotionally abusive, physically abusive aspects of books I just... I can't stand I'm here with a little update. I honestly don't know how long I've read for. Bookly says four hours and five minutes, but I did fall asleep a lot. I've probably read closer to two hours, but anyways, I'm getting to new content now, stuff that I haven't read online. It's a pretty fast read. I'm really enjoying the book so far. I love the whole concept of it. I love Julian and Dante, the introduction of all of these characters. I like seeing Scarlet navigate the new world. It's kind of funny because you know she's gonna probably stay for the whole thing but she keeps telling herself just one day i'm just gonna be here for one day and then i'm gonna leave but you know that's not gonna happen and i also have some theories about legend i feel like we've met him already i will continue reading it's like 12 o'clock right now but because i fell asleep i feel like i can read for a bit longer julian is very suspicious to me i don't know what his deal is i don't know who he is he's definitely not a sailor So I'm at night two of Caraval and the thing that happened beneath the fountain plus Julian, I'm beginning to suspect there's something seriously sinister and messed up going on behind the scenes of the Caraval. It could just all be an illusion, but I feel like there's something sinister going on and it's being covered up. This could also just be because I just read Ninth House and I'm just overthinking things. I feel like Stephanie wouldn't write something like that. I'm sorry, I'm at the scene where Scarlet is dreaming because she oh that's a spoiler i'm at the scene where scarlet is dreaming and she sees legend's face for the first time that's all i have to say if you guys have read the book you know what i'm talking about <laughs> It's 
4 o'clock in the morning now and I haven't finished the book but I feel like it's a bit too much so I'm gonna go to bed, get a few hours of sleep and then finish in the morning. I'm currently at page 337. My toxic trait is spoiling things for myself so I absolutely could not help just reading a few pages in advance so i technically know how the story ends so yeah that is my toxic trait i always have a habit of doing that and it's like the worst and i have comments about how the book ends but i will save that for tomorrow once i actually read the book because i just skimmed we're gonna go to bed now and see you tomorrow morning i just finished reading caravel we follow the story of two sisters tella and scarlet this story is told from scarlet's pov and i think the second one is told from Tellas, and then the third is a mix of both of their POVs. They have a father. He is emotionally and physically abusive towards the girls. When they have an opportunity to escape him, they decide to take it. This opportunity presents as tickets to the exclusive Caraval, which is like this amusement park, magic show. They've been wanting to go for the longest time, so they go to Caraval with the help of Julian who is a sailor. The first thing that happens is Tella goes missing and the objective is to find her. Scarlet teams up with Julian in an attempt to find her sister. Julian is not who he said he was and Caraval is not what it was made out to be. Personally, I gave this book four and a half stars. I would have given it five stars if not for the ending. I did not enjoy the ending whatsoever. We have this reveal from Tella and Julian and it just, it felt like a bit too much. Skip this part if you haven't read the book because I'm gonna go on a little spoiler rant. When we find out that Tella was behind the whole planning of this, it just didn't sit well with me for her to have come up with such an elaborate plan not only to escape her father but also to make Scarlet go through a change. I remember her confirming with legend that his games can physically make people change in the way that they are and I feel like that was one of the reasons why she hosted this game for Scarlet because she wanted Scarlet to change, to be more of a risk taker, to be more brave and to not worry as much. It's very very extreme. She let her sister witness death, she let her sister go through emotional and mental torture, she let her sister believe that two of the people she loves most in the world died and died right in front of her and because of her and I feel like that's just no different than what their dad does to them. It's like the same emotional torture that he inflicts upon them and makes them think it's their fault. And also Julian, when Scarlet meets up with Julian after finding out he is indeed alive, it's just different. I loved the Julian from before. All of these red tabs are a tribute to their romance and their love for each other but I felt like the Julian at the end of the story was not the same Julian. I know he had a role to play, but at the same time, he was supposed to be real. And it, it was just different. Like he called her Scarlet, not Crimson. The way he smiled was different. I just, it was very off-putting. It was like seeing someone you love transform into someone else. And so I no longer liked Tella as much and I no longer loved Julian and I didn't ship Julian and Scarlet anymore because Julian was just such a different person at the end and I felt like, I don't know, kind of like the magic surrounding him just vanished and he just wasn't Julian anymore. That is the end of my spoiler part of this review. I just had to rat that out. I had to get that off my chest. I read a few bad reviews about this just now and one of them said there is no world building and there is no character development and it purely relies on flowery language and romance and I realized that yes that is true. There is no world building and there is no character development and someone else said that the language that Stephanie used was very odd like something would taste like midnight. I didn't really notice the weird language that was used. It kind of just blew right over my head. It's a fun and enjoyable read. I did read it basically in one sitting, which has never happened to me before. It just has this way of just pulling you in right away. I am not excited about the second book though. You guys don't know me well enough to know this, 
but I genuinely strongly dislike when one series is told from multiple POVs. So I don't mind if it's dual perspective. I don't mind if the perspective changes throughout the story, but I don't like when let's say one book is focused on Scarlet and then the second book is focused on Tella. I like following one person's POV throughout the entire series unless it's multiple POVs. I don't mind that, but to have a whole book dedicated to another character Spinoff is the word that comes to mind, but it's not really a spinoff. I like that Stephanie sets up the second book really well in the first book. On to the next book. mention of the prince of hearts i create these pinterest boards for every single book universe that i read about so so far i have all of these ones so if you guys ever want to check it out please feel free i'll leave it in the description like spin-offs to begin with but i feel like this spin-off is particularly irritating for me of course two people will see the same situation differently but i feel like tella's perspective is spinning the events of the previous book into something completely different maybe it's not tella's perspective but i feel like legendary as a book is spinning the events of caraval into a completely different narrative first of all julian and scarlet i just i don't feel the connection i feel felt it in Caraval towards the end of the book she was like ambivalent about him she wasn't madly in love the dynamic was awkward it just didn't flow naturally and this book mind you happens like literally the day after Caraval ends and all of a sudden Julian and Scarlet are like deeply in love where was the time for the wounds to heal like you don't just go from awkward to deeply in love in the span of one day also he used to call her Crimson but then towards the end of Caraval he started calling her Scarlet and now all of a sudden he calls her Crimson again in this book there's a Caraval number two Tella is joining and she asks if Scarlet wants to join and she says that Scarlet's eyes lit up she got super excited and she was like very enthusiastic about joining but I don't have the impression that Scarlet loved Caravelle in the first book like so many traumatic things happened to her it just wasn't a pleasant experience it wasn't a fun game and all of a sudden she's like all for it super enthusiastic loving the game it just it doesn't make sense but i do have to say that this book is more interesting because you get more world building you get more of a background you see more of the world so it's more interesting plot wise but i feel like the two books just don't match they're like saying opposite things But I don't like this book one bit. I went on Goodreads. Legendary has raving reviews. Caraval is the one that has bad ones. I don't know what it is about this book. Maybe it's because I have an aversion to spinoffs. But I also don't like Tella's personality. She's very flirty, but she's also very fake in that she'll feel one way, but then she'll act a different way towards Dante or Jax. She just plays a lot of games in that she doesn't show how she truly feels and she just wants to play games with them and flirt with them but then not give them what they want or not give them what she thinks they want. And I'm not convinced by the whole I want to save my mother. I'm not convinced that Tella was super close with her mother. I'm not convinced that their mother played a big role in their lives. Stephanie hasn't convinced me of the plot for this entire book. I feel like this could be ruined because now I know that this is a thing and so I keep noticing it. One of the Goodread reviews said that Stephanie uses language that just doesn't make sense. Like it's 
flowery it's decorated but if you actually read it it doesn't make sense and i didn't really realize with caravel i just kind of read it and i was like speeding through the book but now that it's been pointed out to me i've been noticing and it's been really bothering me she says he tasted like exquisite nightmares and stolen dreams like the wings of fallen angels and bottles of fresh moonlight what does tasting like the wings of fallen angels mean there's just a bunch of imagery in the whole series in general that just does not make sense and now i can't not notice it because it's been pointed out to me if i were to rate it right now i would give it a two stars i really don't like being the counter opinion like when everyone is hyping up this book so much i feel very uncomfortable being the one that's saying no and like reviewing this book badly if any of you guys feel the same way i do please let me know i'm not the only one started reading finale i'm speaking a bit weird because i'm wearing my retainer i haven't read in like quite a long time i started to pick up legendary again because i felt like it's been way too long since i last read and i just Honestly, I wanted to be done with the series and I wanted to be able to move on and read a different book. So I started reading Finale and I have to say it is by far my favorite book of the series. I'm like hooked already. I'm at page 110 and I love it. Like I love Tella's story more than Scarlet's story. I did not like Tella in Legendary, but I did love Scarlet in Caraval. So I'm more of a Scarlet person, but Tella's story is shining in this book. And I just read the scene between Jax and Tella when Jax is like taking on her emotions and I'm obsessed. Like I love everything about that scene, literally obsessed with the two of them. I ship them so hard. Not me forgetting that I was supposed to film a reading vlog for the Caravel series. It's been so long. So I'm a hundred pages away from the end of finale. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed a Caravel reading vlog. Definitely let me know your thoughts and comments on this series if you have read it. If you haven't read it, let me know if you plan on doing so. Let me know what you guys think of Once Upon a Broken Heart. I have it on my shelf. I'm so excited to pick it up once the third book comes out.
I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye!